learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So again, I'm sitting on my new deck of my future little house. I'm very excited about getting this finished. I'm in no hurry, I wanna be honest. I'm in no hurry and I'm enjoying each step of the process. And it gives me time to plan out the next step. You know, I gotta build some walls frame out some walls and I'm really doing some research on windows. I'm going to go to the Habitat for Humanity restock shop and I'm going to look for windows there so we can really try to save a lot of money on windows. Windows are expensive and doors. I may not be able to find a door at the restock shop. I want to get a pre-hung door just because of my inexperience with carpentry work. I'd rather get something that's already built instead of me having to build a, a frame for a door. So, so I may have to go actually buy a full-size door. I'm just not going to get in a hurry. I've said so many times, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing about it, that we're going to spend $500 a month, roughly, until it's built. $5,000 is what we're expecting to spend on the tiny house. And that should take us about 10 months. Now, we're ahead on budget a little bit. We were able to build the floor joist from materials that we recovered from the trailer frame. This was a mobile home. And so we saved at least $200 on that. We're ahead on the game and that's really good. I'm not gonna go spend an extra $200 this month just because I saved $200 last month. I'm just gonna say, okay, now the price of the house has just dropped. That's the way I'm looking at it. It's gonna be, continue to be $500 a month, no matter the savings. And so that means the money that I do save, I can go ahead and put in savings account. As you probably know by now, I am a fanatic about savings account, emergency fund. I'm just about obsessed with it. A while back, I was building the house. People were suggesting that we take the stimulus package, which would have been, what, $2,400, and just buy half of the materials that we need with the stimulus package. With Carolyn getting $1,200 and I get $1,200, that would have been $2,400. And so that's almost half of what we would have needed to build the, the tiny house. And I kept saying, no, that's a bad idea. It's a really bad idea. At the time, I had lost most of my contracts. I don't remember at the particular time of that video how many I had lost. But by the time it was all said and done, I only had one contract remaining during the pandemic. Well, I'm starting to slowly get some of them back. But in the meantime, I was not making much money. So I was really concerned that I was going to need the $1,200 or the $2,400 to live on in case we ran into the next depression, not to build a house. And folks kept saying, well, you're just gonna need a house. I mean, what happens if we do have go into a depression? You're not gonna have a house to live in. Well, I still have the camper. We've been in that camper for two years and I'm quite comfortable in the camper. So I wasn't really excited to just go ahead and, and build a tiny house and get in it and, and be out of money and then starve to death. I remember one comment specifically. Somebody said, what about the stimulus package? And I said, what about it? And he replied back, don't be stupid. You know what I'm talking about. Use the money to build the tiny house. And I thought, who's stupid here? If you spend the money and then you run out, then what? You're not even going to survive long enough to actually move into the tiny house. You're going to starve to death. So it, did, it didn't make any sense to me. So now the economy is in pretty bad shape. And for some reason, I get this impression that people think it's going to recover quite easily. In my lifetime, I can recall, my adult lifetime, I should say, two significant recessions, both of which significantly changed the path of my life. In 2001, I started my own company, and I was really doing well. I had, I, I think, 10 companies that I was working for, and it was really a miracle how successful I was right out of the gate. Well, then in 2003, we had a, a serious recession, and I lost almost all the contracts. I, re, I kept one. Just one. Well, I rebuilt it and I got back up to, I don't know, 20, 25 contracts. Made it all the way to 2008 and boom, hit us again. Five years, that's all it took, five years. And I was losing contracts left and right. So I decided instead of trying to rebuild the company again, that I was just gonna go ahead and get a job. So I closed down the company in 2011. So I was able to keep the company open for 10 years through two recessions, but man, it was a struggle, a real struggle. And I just don't want to be in that kind of struggle again. I remember in 2003, the summer of 2003, I went around 
town cutting grass. I took my last $800 and I bought a riding lawnmower, $10 a lot, because I wanted to be comp I wanted to beat everybody. And I was hustling every day, seven days a week, from sun up to sun down, and hoping that it would rain just enough to keep the grass growing, but not rain so much that I couldn't cut the grass. So fast forward to present day. I am a contractor again. This time I'm an online contractor. I have uh, several companies that I do computer work for, and I can do it over the internet. I can tap into their computer and I can work on their programs. These are very old programs. I'm not any new programmer or have high tech skills or anything. I'm self-taught. When I was a contractor from 2001 to 2011, I built these systems for companies to use. Well, now these companies don't want to buy anything better. Well, they're small companies and they're happy with the system, but they need somebody to maintain them or if somebody makes a mistake, they want me to go in and fix it. So they hire me on a monthly basis. So they pay me a paycheck every month, whether they use me or not. It's like an insurance program. And if they have a problem, they just call me up. Hey, I got a problem. I tap into their computer system. I fix their problem. And it's like it never happened. Like I said, I lost several contracts during the pandemic. Well, I started getting them back. Well, I got some bad news last night. One of them called me and said that during the riots, their building had been burned down. It's just devastating. I thought, my goodness, all your employees are going to suffer as a result of this. And of course, they're going to try to rebuild, uh, but it's going to take time and they don't have any estimates on how long it's going to take or anything. So I just as well forget even worrying about that company. The systems they had in place, are they going to continue to use systems? Are they going to upgrade their systems? So a lot of things could happen to this company as a result of all the protesters out there doing all this damage. But fortunately, Carolyn and I have been really smart about our money. And we got a little bit lucky. As you know, we had been looking for this property since last August. This is June 2020. Last August, we started looking for property. And we found this piece of property for $4,200. We were able to pay cash for it. We don't owe anybody any debt. The taxes on it are $23 a year. I just found out it's unlikely that they'll actually tax the tiny house once it's finished because it's under the 400 square feet. They'll just consider it a shed. I don't know how true that is, but if that's the case, even if they raise it, you know, just 50 bucks, it's still $75 a year. That, that's really manageable. We feel like that we made a lot of right decisions buying this place. So in January, we came up here, we bought it, bought some solar panels, we got our well going, we got our wood stove going. We, so we got everything we need to survive anything that could happen to us. We could actually live on very, very little money. Well, I guess actually we do live on very, very little money. We only spent last month, the last two months actually, we only spent around $500 a month. Now our budget is $800 a month. And that's what I've budgeted for, I don't know, the last five or six years now. I'm actually considering reducing our budget since we're not spending money. Uh, we can go to the store, spend $175. I, that is just mind-blowing. The Carolyn is so good at shopping. We can go to the grocery store, spend $175 for a month's worth of food. Now, granted, they have this deal where you can pick up five packages of meat for, I think, you know, 25 bucks or something. So we get, we get three sets of five. So we spend $75 in, in meat. Just her skill in cooking things and getting us full with cheap items like potatoes, and noodles. Then the only thing we got is like our car insurance and internet. The only thing we got lucky on is the timing of getting this property. No sooner did we actually move on here. I think it was two or three weeks later, the pandemic hit and we got locked down here. And we have not felt any effect from this thing. Well, then fast forward three months. Now we're into this civil unrest and who knows what's going to happen. We're already at 30% unemployment. I told you in one of the videos that I made recently that our neighbor works in St. Louis. He's come down here to his summer property to get away from what's going over in St. Louis. I looked up this morning, St. Louis is just being devastated. Here we are, we're down here in the country again, safe and sound with that little fear of anybody actually harming us. And we got enough money to survive for months and months and months, maybe even a few years, because we were smart. When people were telling us, spend the stimulus package on your house, you'll have it halfway done. Nope, I don't have to worry about money. I can just sit here and enjoy the beautiful day. I can go out in the woods 
Got plenty of firewood, so I don't have to worry about heat in the winter. I got plenty of water. I got plenty of electric. I got plenty of everything. So the only thing I need to do is make sure I got $23 a year to pay for the taxes on the property. Now, of course, I want to make sure I got enough for insurance on the truck. I want to make sure I got a, a, enough to buy food, of course. Hanging on to the stimulus money, I think, was a very smart decision. And I encourage you to start thinking about long-term effects from this pandemic. Now we're into this civil unrest. And the next question you got to ask yourself is, what is next? How much more can we get? Uh, we got elections coming up. People are going to start really suffering from being unemployed. There's going to be a lot of turmoil, I suspect. I hope I inspire you to save as much money as possible. Don't go out and buy frivolous things. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching.